What's up guys, Justin here with thecgessentials.com continuing our series on rendering in Blender today by starting to talk about applying materials to your objects inside of Blender. So in this video we're going to talk about the importance of materials when it comes to rendering as well as talking through some different ways that you can start applying materials to your models. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. So up to this point, we've talked really about rendering and the different lighting options that are contained inside of Blender, but one of the things that's as important as your lighting is the materials that you use inside of your renderings. So materials are going to be really important because they're the things that really kind of indicate what objects are to the eye, and if you have your materials set up properly, they can really add to your rendered result. If you do a bad job of adding materials, they really kind of make your scenes look very um, unrealistic and just kind of wrong and uh, they can usually make the difference between a good scene and a bad scene. And so what I want to do first is just talk through the basics of adding materials to objects as well as um, doing kind of a cursory run through of nodes and how those can affect your um, those can affect your objects. We may do a more specific video specifically about the nodes and uh, maps in a little bit. But to start off, um, what I've got is I've just got kind of a circular um, object down below and then I've got some lights set up in here just to kind of light my scene and so if we look at the lights right here and we render this you can see how what I have is I have these objects that are this kind of gray material over a kind of stone ground and shadows are being cast and everything else but what we need to do now is we need to add some materials to these objects and so there's a few different ways that you can do this depending on how in-depth you're trying to get. So the easiest way to add a material is just to go over into your properties menu on the right hand side and as you scroll down you can see how there's an option down here for material properties. And so if you click on this, this pops up a little window where you can edit and add materials. And so for example, you can see how I have this object selected right now. And so you can see how that shows up right here. And this is going to show you the materials that you have associated with this object. Well, in this situation, we haven't associated any materials with this object. So what we need to do is we need to start by clicking on the button for new. So you can click on the plus button in order to add a new material. And so we've added our first material to this object. Um, notice that it's named Material 004. That's because there were other materials in this model. So if I was to click this drop down right here, you can see all of the materials that have been added inside of this model. So you can select an existing material if you want to, just by going into this drop down and then selecting different materials by clicking on them. And notice how when you do this, when you select a material with an object selected, it applies that material to this object. So that's going to be the easiest way to add materials to objects is just to select the object and then either add a material or select one of your existing materials. But now let's take a look at some of the options down below because as soon as we had this material and it got brought in, um, you can see how there's a number of different options that we can adjust down below. And so the first is obviously the base color. And so you can affect the base color by just clicking in here and then just dragging this using your, um, using your mouse. And notice how this material is changing in real time um, whenever we change this object right here. So you can adjust and change colors using this tool right here. And so one thing you might notice is this button right here that's been clicked that says use nodes. And so if you don't click on the button for use nodes, you can see how you can create a material in here, but it's much less, uh, you have a lot less options. So 99% of the time you're going to use your nodes in order to create this material. So when I click on this, notice that I get a lot more options down below. Well, all of these options affect the way that your material is going to look. And we can actually edit those in our shading editor. Um, up above and we'll talk about that in a minute but for right now I just want to talk through some of these options and just kind of show you what some of them do inside of your uh, renderings so for example we've got our blue material that we created and note by the way that you could rename this so we could just call this blue material just by typing in here and hitting the enter key but each one of these is going to affect an aspect of the way the materials look so for example, you might notice there's this option down here for metallic. And so if you look at this option and you were to click and drag this metallic, if you move that to the right, you can see how this material now looks like it's made of metal. 
So if we look at it really closely, you can see how it really does look like a metal object um, inside of our renderings. And so what that's doing is that's basically telling your rendering engine to treat this object in a different way. So the way that the light bounces off of this is being affected by this setting. So notice like if I drag this all the way to the right, what I'm getting is I'm getting more reflections off of here. So my light is bouncing in a different way than if I was to turn that one to something like zero. So um, metallic is going to affect if your object looks like metal. Um, now let's go down and let's look at our roughness. And so notice what happens to my lighting in here or my light bouncing off of this when I adjust the roughness. So if I click and drag this to the left, you can see how as I make this less rough, I'm getting more light bouncing off of this uh, off of this material. And so a lower roughness means that this is going to be shinier. And so the shininess is going to affect if something looks kind of glossy, or if I was to drag the roughness all the way to the right, so let's say this was a material that doesn't reflect light, notice how I'm not really getting reflections coming off of this object anymore. And usually with these settings, um, you're either going to kind of find that little gray area in here, like every material is going to reflect light to a certain amount, but some, like a plastic or something like that, reflect a lot of light, others, um, don't really reflect a whole lot of light at all. And so you can make changes to those using these settings down below. And so let's say for example, like over here we wanted something that was more of like a matte paint or something like that. But let's say that we wanted to add another material. So we'll click on new and we'll just call this red plastic. And so we'll give this one kind of a red color. And then down below, we'll adjust the roughness way down so that you get more light reflecting off of this. And so by adjusting these settings, you can simulate different materials inside of Blender. But in addition to this, you can also add textures. So up till now, we've talked about how to um, change a color and then change the settings down below to affect the way that these objects are going to look. Now let's talk about how to apply a texture to this object. And in order to do that, I want to introduce you to the uh, shading workspace. So the shading workspace is a workspace that gives you the ability to really affect more things about your materials. So if you click on this, Notice what this is going to do is this is going to take you into a different workspace that has a different number of windows. And so now let's add a new material to this third object. So if I click in here and I add this third material, what you're going to notice is where inside of our layout, when you add this material, you get these options over here. Well, if you look down below in the shading editor, you're going to notice that you get this node editor down below. And so what the node editor does is it allows you to actually link things into your shader. And so the shader is basically, it's this set of settings that are associated with your color or with your texture. So if you look down here, you've got what's known as the principled BSDF shader. So basically what that is, is that's just a list of all of the settings that you have over here on the right hand side. And so you can adjust those inside of your node editor as well as you can over here. And then notice that what you've got, if you were to click on this object, for example, is you've got a line coming out of this node or out of this object and going into this object. And so basically what that's doing is that's taking all of these settings and then it's moving them into the material output that's being applied to your object. And so this is important because down below you can add different kinds of nodes and those nodes are going to do different things to your material. So for example, um, if I was to come down here and do a shift A, so if I was to add something, you can see how this gives me a number of different things that I can add to my model or to my material. So um, each one of these is gonna do something a little bit different. So there's things in here that can do like math. So for example, if you have like a certain material map or something like that, and you wanna do something to it to make it stronger, um, you can apply math to it in order to affect the values in here. And all of those values are going to affect your final result. And so in this situation, what I wanna do is I want to go find a material that I downloaded from Texture Haven, and I wanna apply it to this object. And so the way that I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna use this little window over here and I'm gonna find my material. And so in this situation, and I'm going to set this to, let's call it vertical list for right now. We'll drag this right a little bit. What I wanna do is I have a marble tile material that I've downloaded. So I'm gonna double click in this folder 
and I will link to the website where you can download this material, but notice how this has a number of different images associated with it. And so if I was to open these inside of my uh, inside of my file editor, you can see how when I downloaded this material, it came with a number of different images. And so the first one that we're gonna talk about is the diffuse map. And so the diffuse map is basically the image um, that's going to get textured and applied to this object. So that's gonna be this object right here. These other maps affect the way that the light is going to um, the way that your rendering engine is going to affect your light. These are called PBR or physically based rendering maps and we'll talk about those in a second. But for right now um, what I want to do is I want to find this diffuse map and I want to bring that in down here. And so you can either just find it in here, click and drag it in like this or you could do a shift A and you could just look for an image texture node so you can see how I can bring that node in this way as well. And so notice that right now I don't have a material showing up on this object. So even though I brought this map in, it's not actually showing up on this object quite yet. And so in order for that to work, what I need to do is I need to create a link between the color that's being output by this image and the color that's contained in my principal BSDF. So if I was to click and drag this over, so as soon as I link these two things up, notice that now this stone material is being applied to this object. And so one thing I don't like about this is it's a little bit big. I want this stone material to be a little bit smaller on my preview object. And so what I'm gonna do is real quick, I'm gonna go into my UV editing space and I haven't really UV edited this whole object. So, um, so I haven't really unwrapped the UVs, but we can come in here and if we do like a material preview like this and scale this up and down, we can affect the tiling of the material. So you can see I was able to use the UV editing to adjust the size of the material that's being applied on here. And obviously this isn't UV mapped super well right now. Um, I'm not gonna worry too much about that in this video, but notice that this now has that material applied to it when I render. Um, but we can make this more realistic by loading the other maps in here. So if you remember before, um, we talked about how you can adjust the roughness of this material in order to affect how much light is going to bounce off of it. Well, what we can do instead is we can load one of these maps in, in this case, the roughness map. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna supply the rendering engine with more information about the way that light should bounce off of this object. So what we wanna do is we wanna find the roughness map, drag it in, and then we can link our roughness node to our roughness input. So now, if you look at this, this now has more realistic light bouncing off of it. And we'll go ahead and switch over to rendered mode just to take a closer look to this. But now the reflections on this are more realistic than they were when we had the when we had just the blanket roughness set in here because this is actually set based on the real physical characteristics of the material in real life and so these maps are going to be really important because they're really going to affect the realism of your different objects inside of blender and so i will do a full video talking about pbr materials and what exactly they do but for now just know that you can add images in order to act as text in here and then you can adjust their settings using the node editor. And so one thing I forgot to talk about before is um, how to apply multiple different materials to an object. So if you remember over here, what we did is we just clicked on this and we just added a single material. Well, let's say that you wanted to apply more than one material to an object. Well, right now we're in object mode, right? So within object mode, if I was to add a material, so let's say I wanted to add my red plastic material like this, you can see how that gets applied to this whole thing. But let's say that we wanted within this object to have like a blue band or, or something like that. Well, what we would do is you can add multiple materials to an object just by adding a new material slot. And then we could just click on this blue material. Notice how nothing has changed inside of our object yet. However, if we go in here, we hit the tab key and then we go into edit mode. So by hitting the tab key, we've gone into edit mode. You can do an alt click or really any kind of click that you want and you can select individual parts of your 
geometry. So let's say I wanted to select these three objects. Well, I could come in here and I could assign this blue material to those selected objects. So within um, edit mode, you can actually apply materials to different parts and pieces of your model. So now if I tab out of this, notice that what I have is I have this material applied to the edge right here, and then this material applied to that geometry that I had selected when I first did this. So note that you can apply multiple different kinds of materials to an individual object in this way. All right, so then the last thing I wanna talk about is let's say that we wanted to make this rather than it's a material like these, let's say we wanted to make it a glass material. So up till now, we've talked about the principled shader. And so what the principled shader does is that creates, uh, that creates materials based on the settings that you have in here. However, there's other shaders that you can apply to objects as well. And so remember that we talked about the principled BSDF shader. Well, what I want to do is I want to change this to a different kind of shader. And so in order to do that, what I can do is I can come in here and click on this. Notice how these are the different kinds of shaders that you can have in here. And they all do different things. So there's a mix shader, which brings two different materials together. There's a ton of different things. Well, in this case, we want to adjust this one to a glass BSDF shader. And so what a glass BSDF shader is going to do is that's going to, instead of having all of those different maps in here, that's going to apply a material to this that you can adjust in order to let light through it. All right, so now we've applied our glass shader to this object. The first thing you're gonna notice is it doesn't look like glass, like at all, right? Like it just looks like one of these boring materials over here. Well, one of the reasons for that is because we're using the wrong render engine. So right now, we're set up to render this in, in, in Eevee. So Eevee is the real-time rendering engine built inside of um, built inside of Blender. And uh, it's great for a lot of things, but one of the things it doesn't necessarily do super well is calculating the actual movement of the light. It's more approximating it. So what we wanna do is we wanna switch over to cycles. So you can just go over into your scene settings or your render properties in your scene settings and under render engine, switch this over to cycles. So now, if you fly around this and you look to the right, you can see how a little bit of light is coming through this um, using this shader. And we'll talk more in the future about creating a more realistic light. But for now, notice that only some of your light is coming through them. And part of the reason for that is because this currently has a roughness value of 0.5. Well, if you were to come in here and adjust this roughness value down and then fly around it like this, with cycles active, notice that now what this is doing is this is actually letting the light through and it's refracting the light as it comes through. So now this is acting as a glass material and it's actually like bending the light that comes through this object. So you can use this in order to create a glass material. And then if you were to adjust the index of refraction option, notice how as I adjust the index of refraction, the light is getting refracted through this object more. So this is simulating the way that the light is bouncing through this object in a different way. So you can adjust this up or down in order to adjust the result that you're going to get. But more as an example, just know that there's more nodes in here that allow you to create different kinds of materials inside of your rendering. So that should give you an idea of how to get started with applying materials inside of your model. So there's a lot of other things we could talk about like UV mapping or more complex node setups that we can get into in the future. But I more wanted to give you an idea of some of the options that are contained inside of Blender for rendering realistic materials. Leave a comment below. Let me know if you had any questions, if there's anything that didn't make sense to you. I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new Blender content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it. I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.